Hi, this is your Sapin Bharatiya and welcome to your last talk. Today we have with us once again Ital Schwartz, co-founder and CTO at Commodore. Ital is good to Ital is good to have you on the show. Yeah, happy to come back. Like always, a pleasure talking with you. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Today we are going to talk about the ever-growing complexity of modern Kubernetes environment and how to deal with this complexity. Because the fact is that this complexity is not going to go away. So we have to learn how to deal with it, to how to embrace a holistic approach, and leveraging. You know, back in those days, we used to call Kubernetes as the latest emerging tech. So how to leverage automation and Gen AI, like you know, emerging technologies. to deal with this complexity but before we deep dive into this discussion because there has been a gap between you and I talk last time so just remind our viewers what is commodore all about first of all happy to talk about all things kubernetes related uh, what we do in commodore is we are actually a modern kubernetes uh, management solution and that means that we help both cluster operators devops platform engineers sre and developers alike to get the most out of their kubernetes so it means that we help like the cluster operators with things like high level understanding of what's happening in their environment how to configure it how to tweak it how to do user management in kubernetes while giving the developers which usually only care about very specific and small subset of kubernetes all of the tools needed to be self sufficient so commodore in a high level is everything an enterprise need when it comes to using and getting the most out of kubernetes now let's talk about some of the pain points so what is the most common challenge for enterprises running kubernetes at scale i think the most common one is that it's easy and like i'm doing a air quote here for anyone who is just listening and to spin up new kubernetes clusters but on the other hand it is super hard to spin or increase your knowledge around kubernetes in the same fashion and that means that getting experienced devops sre developers who know kubernetes is almost like mission impossible and while organization are trying to move to kubernetes they are finding they are ill equipped both in terms of tooling and knowledge and that in turn creates some very bad feedback loop of we are trying to use kubernetes no one really knows kubernetes kubernetes doesn't really work for us and then organization are becoming very uh, you know uh, like this uh, with this love to to kubernetes and more than that if i look at most big enterprises that i saw we work with a lot of their migration to kubernetes like the phase 1 was a failure and that is because kubernetes does have a lot of complexities and on the other side there aren't a lot of tools that help you to overcome this complexity when we talk about you know having a holistic approach uh, to kubernetes uh, operations and troubleshooting what do we really mean because kubernetes is not one monolith you know there are so many different moving pieces in there so what do we mean by holistic approach here so kubernetes in a super high level like let's go for a second like before kubernetes right like so we had your infrastructure layer uh, back then it was actual bare metal and then vm and then ec2 machines right like there is a lot of evolution and there was the application layer application layer i mean i have my python or java or golan code running somewhere what kubernetes created is some very weird and good hybrid approach where the lines between the actual infrastructure and the application is very blurry and uh, you can think about it application can and will impact the infrastructure it will create the cluster to spin up more nodes and it will like utilize the relevant like infrastructure pieces the infrastructure node application and also inside of kubernetes we have this concept of crds or operators that allows me to describe things that are again like somewhere in between the infrastructure and the application level <clears throat> when when we say commodore is the solution and like provide holistic approach it means that we are able to help our users both with the infrastructure layer load balancer pvcs ingresses and so on the application layer meaning the actual pod that are running the compute that actually like this is what organization really care about right like the business logic that are running on top of these clusters and also all of this layer in between what uh, we called internally addons 
uh, things like Search Manager or External DNS or Istio. Uh, like all of those things are somewhere in between the application layer and the infrastructure layer. And in Commodore, we help you, first of all, to understand and like um, understand and detect problems in each one of those different components. But more than that, we guide you from detection to resolution based on our own like playbooks and you know you mentioned Gen S or Gen AI, but we can also fit the right solution to the right persona. And if a developer is trying to solve a problem and if a DevOps is trying to solve a problem, they probably want to see different scope, different data points and so on. And we have this ability in one single platform to cater the needs of basically everyone using Kubernetes inside the organization. Excellent. Uh, thank you. And since we are also talking about Gen AI, how do you see the emergence of Gen AI? Is it a force multiplier? Is it a blocker? Or is it just hype at this point? That's a great question. So if you have asked me this like three years ago, I would probably tell you something like it's, it's mainly hype. Looking at the industry in the past couple of years, I think especially GitHub uh, Copilot really changed and ChatGPT obviously really change how me and like the industry approach Gen AI because we see that it has the ability to help developers and to help DevOps to write better code or it help us to automate some of the boring stuff that we do in work. So on one side, I think that it already demonstrated itself. On the other side, I will say a lot of the modern APM tools and solution or other solution like open source claim that they use AI in order to solve issues faster, better, and so on. From my experience, you know, my, my humble experience in the industry, most of those tools are mainly like hype driven. So they offer you quite a lot of things, like, and they oversell and under deliver. And that is because using Gen AI in order to solve problems is a very, very complex like, job, especially in something like Kubernetes that is so complex in nature. Uh, so, I, I, you know, again, like I am a bit biased here because Commodore does use Gen AI for something very specific. But I can tell you that during the experimentation, we tried a lot of understanding where is the boundaries? How can we use Gen AI in order to help our users to solve issues in Kubernetes faster? And the main problem with Gen AI, and we see it again when I benchmark ourselves comparing to other tools, is that it always try to help you. Like it is always trying to be the nicest person that, you know, help you to find a problem, help you to find the issue. And a lot of the times, if there is no issue or if there is no real problem, it will just create one. And we saw it time after time after time, these hallucinations, like it blamed unexisting resources, unexisting namespaces, like Kubernetes issues that didn't really exist. So because Gen AI is really eager to please, Plus, the fact that Kubernetes is indeed super complex, it creates a lot of noise when using Gen AI solutions. And the first thing that we did when we started developing our own like, Gen AI solution is, you know, let's put Gen AI uh, aside for a second. We created what we call like uh, the Gen AI playground or the playground, where we're simulating a lot of very common Kubernetes issues and we try ourselves and different tools and see how do they respond, basically. And, you know, we tried, again, I don't want to bring any names here, but we tried some of the very, like, uh, leading players, some players that are putting Gen AI in their, like, H1. And, you know, it, it didn't really help. Like, 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 in the end of the day, in the best case, it said something like, hey, go check your logs. And I'm like, yeah, but this is why I'm using you. So, we, like, you'll automate this, like, boring stuff for me or you'll help me to figure out things myself. So... To, to answer the question, I think most of the industry is still very hype driven. I do believe there are some nuggets. I do believe there are, are some areas where Gen AI really excels. And again, in Commodore, we can talk about it, but we did it a bit differently. Uh, but going forward, like two years from now, three years from now, I do believe it's going to change how companies are like, operating, both in terms of Kubernetes and even more than that. Can you also talk about when we talk about complexity of Kubernetes and we talk to people and they're like, you know, yes, the more pieces there are, it does lead to 
more, I mean, the complexity is not just complexity. When we talk about complexity, what does it really mean? It could be about cost, it could be about security, it could, could be a performance, it could be a maintenance. So when we talk about you know Kubernetes, and when we try to extend your Kubernetes stack with additional tools and add-ons, and as we discussed, you know, that's what Kubernetes is all about. It's not just one monolith. What are the potential risks associated with this, you know, when we start extending with additional tools and add-ons? Yeah, and mainly they are start spinning out of control. Uh, so the thing about Kubernetes is, is it makes it very easy to install or to add a new tool. Like all you need to do is um, install and you get like your own Grafana with Prometheus, with FluentD, with a lot of things. So getting started in Kubernetes and adding more capabilities into your cluster is very tempting. Like it's so easy, but maintaining those services in a production level over time is super complex. And what we see is companies are, you know, rushing to adopt these new tools without understanding the price. And we just had like, a, I think an hour ago, uh, a call with one of our like uh, customers and they're using Istio. And when I asked them like, why Istio? You know, like Istio, it has a lot of advantages, but it's not like a novice level tool. And those guys are not that you know far ahead in their Kubernetes adoption. And he said something like we brought like a freelance to help us do the migration. He told us we have to use Istio. So yeah, like we're using Istio. And again, like it's so easy even to start in, like using Istio, so easy, but it is so hard to maintain Istio over time across different clusters. Like I know so many companies that tried and failed. So I think the main problem is Kubernetes gives you the illusion of like simplicity while it hides the very like deep layers of complexity underneath. And only after like, you know, you're already like uh, a bit, you know, committed, only then you start to understand where are you at and like the, the hole that you just dug yourself. No matter which technology we talk about, there comes a time when there is another technology that is ready to replace it, though it doesn't hold true in every case. Linux kernel is a very good example. You know, it's been more than 30 years. It's not only going strong, but it's fine adoption in places you would not expect. Same is the case with Unix, mainframe, talk about. So there are certain technologies, they become foundational. They are not the technology which go through transition phase and nobody talks about them today. Now, when it comes to Kubernetes, how do you see it? Uh, what kind of future you see holds for Kubernetes, uh, and uh, how will it help? You know, of course, it has already hit the maturity curve. It's in production. You know, the use cases adoption is insane. So, but how do you see it will help engineers thrive, or do you think it will restrict them? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great question. I do believe it's going to be one of those like foundational like models in then. I think it's a bit like Linux. I think five years, maybe 10 years from now, people will just don't really think about Kubernetes. It's going to be so common. Uh, it's going to be everywhere. It's going to be the thing that runs your application. So I think currently we're spending a lot of time also maintaining the Kubernetes clusters and the nodes and like all of this. I think this is going to be much more stable. It's going to be like just work. Again, you know, I know quite a lot around technology. I'm not a Linux expert, right? Like it's not my thing, even though I've used Linux all my career, like everywhere I go. But you know, I know the basic, I know how it works, but that's pretty much it. I think 10 years from now, most of the people won't really know the internal of Kubernetes. Like it's not going to be a thing like it is right now. It's going to be much more common, much more abstracted. And I think as a foundational, it will like stay. Maybe there will be a new, better abstraction on top of it. Instead of saying something like deployment and pod and service, maybe there will be new CRDs that encapsulate some of those things. But, you know, I think it is, like, first of all, it is like enough, it gains so much popularity. And on the other side, it's very extendable. So it's very easy to build another like layer on top of Kubernetes. And I think this is where the industry is going like five years from now or like 10 years from now, like some new abstraction layer that will be built upon Kubernetes. Like it's hard to me to see like another orchestration layer trying to, to you know, to fight Kubernetes. Maybe it will happen, but like it doesn't make any sense again because of the extend extendable like nature of Kubernetes. You can 
pretty much plug and play everything, right? Like you can change the schedule layer, you can change the network layer, you can change the volumes, like everything is extendable. So that's, that's my prediction. Tal, thank you so much for uh, joining me today. Talk about this really important topic, the Kubernetes complexity, and also how to kind of in a very, very pragmatic way, look at it, how to deal with this, uh, not only how to deal with this, but actually how to enable customers deal with this. So thanks for sharing those great insights and I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you and hope to be here again.